Welcome, friends. Today, we are doing another perfume review. Outrageous. That is right, my friends. Once again, I am returning to you this time with a perfume review. And the perfume I am reviewing today is Fahrenheit Parfum by Dior. So, this perfume was released in 2014 and it was made by the master of flankers himself, Francois Demarchi. There is quite a fat blurb about this, but I will read the quote from Francois. And it says, I did not want to create a caricature of Fahrenheit fragrance, which already has an assertive composition. Instead, I followed the original structure by adding elements that enrich the story and highlight its atypical personality. So, I will follow that up by telling you that the notes in this perfume are licorice, suede, mandarin at the top, rum, coriander, cumin, and violet leaf in the mid, and then vanilla, bourbon vanilla in the base. And the big notes I get from this are licorice, violet, rum, suede, and vanilla. Um, okay, so this was released in 2014, which is, I mean, it was released in January of 2014, so you're talking... This is nearly 11 years old. That is bonkers to me. I remember this coming out. My God. Um, this is my second bottle of this perfume. I went through most of a previous one. Um, and then I gave the rest away to my friend. And I never really actually opened this one after that. You know? My intention was to just crack on into this, but I didn't in the end. Um, and I've decided to sell it, and tonight it has been sold. So that's why I'm doing this review. I do like this, but I've got to be honest, I feel like it's a tame version of the original, especially the vintage original. This little wasp of a perfume um so this opens up with that kind of licorice slightly spicy slightly um, slightly ozonic familiarity that Fahrenheit the original has it's it's probably no good comparing this to the vintage because really what it should be is it should be compared to the 20 2011 20, 2012 version of Fahrenheit it's an interesting story I'm going to tell you about that in a second actually but it opens up with this kind of familiar Fahrenheit DNA it then, it then moves away from that. It, it, the DNA remains, but it kind of pulls in its own direction. It does something. Sl it does something more than slightly different. It becomes its own kind of animal. You get a much softer leather in this. Um, you get a little bit of booziness, and that booziness is um, augmented, I want to say. It is, what's another word? Complemented. Yes, that's a good word. Complemented by the vanilla, you know? Oh. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. It's a very long-lasting perfume. But I find it quite dull, if I'm being honest. Um, I find it very Francois Demarchi, who I said earlier was the master of um, flankers. And he is the master of flankers. All his best work for Dior, I think, was flankers. 
Um, but the story I was going to tell you actually was the story of a reformulation. So Fahrenheit remained largely the same from when it was released until the late 90s, the early 2000s, when it was reformulated by some utter bastard who just who just poured a shit ton of vanilla into it. There must have been some chemicals they either weren't willing to pay for anymore or they weren't allowed to use anymore or they thought perfume was moving in a different direction. And they reformulated Fahrenheit and it wasn't Demarche, to my knowledge. Um, someone adulterated the original Fahrenheit and turned it into a vanilla mess for the best part of 10 years and then after Demarche was brought in as the in-house perfumer, he achieved something so rare, so incredibly, like, novel in perfumery. I can't think of another perfume this has happened to. He reformulated a reformulation, right, in the, in the early 2010s, right, and he made Fahrenheit better. I've never known anything like it. I can't... If you can think of something where that's happened before, he reformulated Fahrenheit, the... Not the vintage one, but the one that had been reformulated and actually made it better. You, you can't... I mean, that is just wild. I've never known anything like it before or since, you know? And that was the EDT. What he also did was brought out quite a few flankers of Fahrenheit. There's been Aqua Fahrenheit, there's been Fahrenheit Cologne, there's been Fahrenheit Absolute, which is the best of the lot, and actually vies with the original, the origin, not the vintage, but the original EDT that he reformulated. Um, that got discontinued and the prices went through the roof. Uh, that is a sensational flanker. One day I'll review that if I haven't already. I love that stuff. Um, but this was released in 2014. And as I was saying before, he's the master of a flanker. And he did this with Dior Homme Parfum. This became wildly popular. As did Dior Homme Parfum. It's a cult classic because I don't know that it sells that well. You know, it's still around um, in shops, but it's Dior Homme Parfum was discontinued in the United States, I believe. So it obviously wasn't doing great there. Um, but this is like, to me, if you if if I if I still had my Dior Homme Parfum, I would be able to put them both next to each other, Fahrenheit Parfum and Dior Homme Parfum, and be able to say there are very similar structural, like, profiles of the pair of these. Um, in Dior Homme Parfum, he turned up the leather massively. Just a big slug of leather, which I thought ruined the fragrance. But his reformulation of Dior Homme EDT, it suited that fragrance in the same way this suits the reformulation of Fahrenheit that he did. So it's coherent, you know? And I respect him for that. I do. He also made your he also made Fahrenheit uh, parfum. Uh, not parfum, um absolute. Which I love. And for a long time I was calling for Demarche to be out of Dior and how I really didn't like the stuff he was re His later Dior privés were ugly. They were bad. They were really bad. But now we, are, now we have got Kirk John in situ at Dior. I am pining for the days of Francois Demarche, especially the first 10 years he was there until about 2017. Um, Demarche will always be tarnished for me because he took credit for making Bois d'Argent when he reformulated it in 2017, 2018. Um, that was just awful. 
that was that was pretty unforgivable. Um, and even if it wasn't his idea, he went along with it. I would have refused, you know. But anyway, this has turned into a bit of story time, hasn't it? Fahrenheit parfum lasts all day. You will be left with a familiar but changed smell. Big suede, big vanilla, um, the violet leaf still there, a little bit of booziness. Um, smells nice, smells good. The reason it's, it's really popular, you know? It's a good, coherent flanker, and it's what Demarche does best. And that is it, friends. That's my review. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you all again soon.